In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool 3D carved witch hat project, which is a perfect CNC project with Halloween being right around the corner. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is we're using VCarve Pro, but you could do this with VCarve Desktop as well. It's not required that you have Pro. Uh, but you will need the VCAR version of the program from Vetric because we're going to be doing some features that are not available in uh, Vetric Cut 2D. So we're going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to make this file 18 by 12. And the material I'm using is one and a half inch thick HDU sign foam. I just happen to have a scrap piece around. Uh, so this is these are the dimensions I want to use. We're going to make sure it's a single sided job that's selected. Our Z0 is going to be the top of the material surface, so that's where we're going to touch off our tool and set our Z0 position. And our XY datum, I'm going to use the lower left corner. And the main reason for that is because I'm using a larger piece of scrap HDU than what I've actually defined here. So what I want to do is I want to make this project and then I want to use a saw later and kind of cut out this area so I have some leftovers to use for a future project. Uh, so it's easier to do that by just setting it to the lower left corner of the material. And then once this is done, I'll know how much I use and it'll minimize the amount of scrap I have. So we're going to click OK. Now, the 3D file, I know the first thing you're going to ask is where can I get that file? And uh, I actually got it. It's a commercial file. And I got it from a website called sergand.com. The lady who owns this website posts a lot on Facebook groups of different models that she creates. She's actually an incredible uh, 3D modeler, and you can actually give her uh, things like uh, photographs and things like that, and she'll actually turn that into an STL model for you. So this could be a, a good potential source for you if you don't know how to actually draw in 3D models. You can use somebody like this to, to actually create these models for you, uh, which could be great, especially if you're using this for uh, business purposes, this, this is a good resource to have. If you do a search for Magic Hat, that's, uh, this is the model that, uh, that she uh, had posted on Facebook. And so I went ahead and I bought it. And that's what I'm going to use for this project. So what I end up he with here is a zip file that she gave me. And when I unzip it, there's a bunch of uh, JPEG files to show you different renderings of what this is going to look like. And then there's two STL files. There's a Hat Halloween Empty and a Hat Halloween. The difference between the two of them is Hat Halloween Empty is actually just the hat. So if you want to just make this, this model the hat, then that's the STL that you'd use. You'll notice the file size is significantly smaller. The Hat Halloween is the full uh, file with this scroll attached to it. So that's the one that we're actually going to use here. So in VCarve, we're going to go to File import component slash 3D model. And we're going to go in and import the hat Halloween. Now, after a second or two, it's going to load. It's, it's a relatively large file. So once that comes in now, this screen here, this is important. So this red box here defines the material that I have set up. So 18 by 12 by one and a half. And this is the size of the model as it imported. So what we need to do is scale this model down so it's going to fit inside our material. So where you got model size, we want to make sure lock XYZ ratio is checked because we're going to go ahead and we're going to modify the X axis here and I want the whole thing to scale uniformly. So in looking at these numbers, 43 is the largest number here. So that's usually the one that I try to adjust first. And I know that my work material is 18 inches. So I want to give myself a little border. So I'm going to type in 17. I'm going to scale this thing down to 17 inches wide. And as you'll see, it comes up with 9.86 for the Y, which is good because we defined 12 inches. And so it's going to fit within that. And then the Z is 1.35 and we have 1.5 inches. So that's really all we needed to do is just define the X. Everything else is going to fit in place. So I'm going to click apply. I'm going to go ahead and center the model, and that's going to put it inside the box. But you can see here how, if you look at this, part of the model is, is under the, the plane and the other part is on top. What I'm going to want to do here is I want to drag the model to the bottom of the material, and then I want to just click OK. All right, so that's what it's going to look like. 
uh, in a 3D rendered view. We're gonna switch to 2D view. Now the first thing that we need to do here, make sure you're in the modeling tab. We have to define a vector that goes all the way around the perimeter of this model. Vectric makes this really, really easy. All you need to do is select the model. As long as you're in the modeling tab, you're gonna come up here to third icon from the left is create vector boundary around selected components. Just click that. What's gonna happen now is you'll notice I've got this vector that's all the way around the model. And that's gonna be what I'm gonna use later to cut this project out after we're done carving it. So the other thing I need to do is I wanna go ahead and put some text on here that says trick or treat. So what I did was I went to 1001fonts.com and I was looking for some Halloween type fonts. So that's what I searched for. And I really like this Friday the 13th font. I thought that would look cool. Uh, in the scroll area to say trick or treat. So we're gonna use that font. And what I did was I installed it on my computer. You may have to restart vCarve in order for it to recognize that font that is now on your computer. So just be prepared for that. Uh, so you might wanna at this point in time, do a file, save as, uh, we'll save this as uh, Halloween. Project and uh, save that CRV file. So now I can close Vetric and open it again if I have to, if I don't see that font. So we're gonna go into the drawing tab and go to the draw text. And you wanna make sure that you choose the Friday the 13th font or whatever font you choose to use for this project. We're gonna type in trick or, and then treat on the next line. And we wanna make sure that centered is select. I'm gonna start at I think I want this to be around 1.6 inches per letter, and that actually looks pretty good here for, for what I'm looking to do. So we'll go ahead and click close. Now, I'm going to spread the, the letters out just a hair, and I'm going to go ahead and, and double click this and center it kind of in this area here. Okay, now that's pretty much all we need to do for the design aspect. Everything else we're gonna do at this point is gonna be within ToolPass. So we're gonna open the ToolPass tab and click the pin icon so this remains here. Now, when you're doing a 3D carving job, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is a roughing toolpath. So what I'm gonna do is click on the 3D roughing here and it's gonna bring up this page. We have to set up the material. So a lot of this is repetitive from at the beginning. The thickness of the material is 1.5 inches. I'm using the lower left as my XY datum and a material surface for Z0. This is the model position in the material. So at this point, because the model thickness is 1.35 and my material is 1.5, it gives me a little bit of flexibility on where I could put the model within the material. So this light brown area is the actual model and the dark brown is how much material is left over. So if I want this to be where I remove the top and then the back of the file is the bottom of the material, I can leave it set like this. Since it's just a small amount, it's literally slightly over an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna pull this up so that the model is at the top of the material, and that leaves me with about an eighth of an inch on the bottom, so I don't have to worry about my uh, V-carving to push out through, okay? So that's how we're gonna set that up. Now, uh, my rapid gaps here, I'm going to leave this set on my machine. I leave clearance at a half inch and my plunge a 0.2. And my Z gap above the material uh, for my start position, I'm actually going to make one inch. And I'm going to click OK. So now this file is, uh, the boundary has been set. Everything for the material for cam is all set. So what we're going to do is we got to select a tool for roughing. Now, in this particular case, I am going to use a Mana Tool 46259, which is actually a 3 8 of an inch uh, two flute end mill. Now I am carving this out on our uh, Stepcraft Q408 machine, which is a four by eight foot machine. And I have capability to go all the way up to three quarters of an inch shank on my tooling. So I wanna use a bigger diameter for clearing out the roughing so that I, it just takes less time. Uh, if you can't support three eighths or larger end mills, then make this a quarter of an inch. You'll want to go to the biggest end mill you could fit on your machine because you want to remove material for the roughing as quickly as possible. So the feed and speed settings that are here are set for my machine based on uh, Amana Tools uh, feed and speed recommendations. So that's what I'm going to use here. Gives me a chip load of just under 
six thousandths, which is right in the range that the manufacturer is suggesting. So I'm going to select this tool and I want to machine this. I don't want to machine to the material boundary. So in other words, I, I only want to rough out around the boundary of the actual project. There's no real need to machine the entire thing down because all this white space over here is going to get machined and it's just wasting time. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure model boundaries select, but I want to put a boundary offset. And the reason I want to do that is to avoid any possibility of rubbing when I run a ball nose end mill on here. And additionally, when I go ahead and I cut the perimeter around later, I can use an eighth inch end mill and I don't have to have such a long reach because I would have removed the bulk of the material uh, roughly a half inch outside this border. Okay, so I, I'm going to leave it at a boundary offset of a half inch. I'm going to leave 20 thousandths of material left that my uh, finishing end mill is going to need to remove. I'm going to use a roughing strategy of Z level and I'm going to do uh, profile last. So what's going to happen is it's, it's basically going to go level by level. This is a new feature uh, where you can go depth first or level by level. In this case, I'm going to go level by level, which means it's going to go down. This end mill is set to do three eighths of an inch per pass. So it's going to go down and remove three eighths inch of a material wherever it needs to. And then it's going to go the next level down and three eighths and it's going to keep going until all the materials removed. I want a raster along the x-axis, which is going to be back and forth. And uh, basically, that's pretty much it. I am going to add a ramp of one inch. Although I'm using sine foam, I don't need it. It's just a good habit to get in the habit of using ramps uh, because an end mill is not a drill bit and needs to go in at an angle. It's not really meant to plunge straight down. So if you were doing this project out of hardwood, you definitely would want to have a ramp here. So just as a point of habit, I always uh, plan on using a ramp no matter what the material I'm doing. You could give it a special name. I'm going to leave it as 3D Roughing. I'm going to click Calculate. So in previewing this, if I preview the selected toolpath, you can see what it's going to do now. So basically, it's removing level by level, 3 8 inch per level. And you can see the half inch channel, it's leaving all the way around the outside of the perimeter. So when, now when I come back and I go to cut this model out, I I've, can use a little bit shorter ML. I don't have to have a really, really long reach to get over the bulk of the material that's left. And also when my ball nose end mill is going um, up and down on there, I don't have to worry about the, the shank of the end mill rubbing against the, the vertical wall, of the material that's left over. What I'll do is when I set up the ball nose, instead of going a half inch, I'll go an eighth inch over and that'll leave me some space all the way around so I don't have to worry about any potential rubbing whatsoever. So the next toolpath I'm going to do is go to the finishing, 3D finishing toolpath. And for this, I'm using a Amana tool 46284 which is a one degree tapered eighth inch ball nose. And it has a pretty long reach on it. And again, the feed and speed settings that I have here are uh, set based on the manufacturer's uh, suggestions, giving me a chip load of just under two thousandths of an inch, which is right in the ballpark of where I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click select, and that's going to be the ML. Now the same thing here, I'm going to do a machining limit. I'm going to select the model boundary because there's no reason to 3D carve past the model. But I am going to leave a boundary offset in an eighth of an inch. So it's going to carve to the edge of the model plus an eighth of an inch. And since I gave myself a half inch of clearance, I'm perfect. I have no issues with anything crashing or rubbing or anything like that. I'm going to do an offset uh, strategy for, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a rafter, raster strategy uh, for this particular one. Sometimes I'll do an offset it just depends on the shape of the model and what I'm doing. Since this model is rectangular, uh, I find that a raster is probably going to be a little quicker. So I'm going to do a 90 degree raster, which means uh, because I did my roughing across X, I'm going to do my finishing across Y. Now, depending on how you run your roughing and finishing, if this is wood you're using, you'll want a machine with the grain. If it's, but since it's sign foam and there is no grain, it really doesn't matter. I can go either way. I can go to 45. I just uh, like to get in the habit of roughing in one direction and finishing in the other. The only exception would be if I have to follow the grain of the wood. Uh, so really that's it. I click calculate. Vetric does the rest. It's going to calculate the, the finishing toolpath. And you could see everything in blue here is what's getting machined. So I'm going to go ahead and preview that. 
and you can see now there is my model, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can also see the eighth inch channel that I'm leaving all the way around. So that's where the end mill, the ball nose stops, but this is where the roughing end mill stop. All right, so that's that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I need to do is I have to V-carve the text. So I'm going to select the text and I'm going to go here to V-carving toolpath. And I'm going to start at zero. I don't know if I need a flat depth yet. I want to do a preview just to see what this is going to look like. You can now use clearance tools, which is really cool in version 10. Uh, in this particular case, I don't think I'm going to need it. Uh, but if I found that I was plunging too deep uh, to make up the width of the vex vector, I would probably set a flat depth. And I don't think this is going to be wide enough to where I would need to come in with like an eighth inch end mill to remove material any faster. So I think I'm going to be all set here. I am using an Amana tool RC1102, which is an inch and a half diameter, 90 degree uh, insert V-bit. Uh, love this bit for carving. It's a half inch shank, so it works well on my Q-Series 408. Uh, if Again, if you have a, a machine that only supports up to quarter inch collets, then you know use a 90 degree half inch V-bit with a quarter inch shank and it's going to do the same job. Again, all my feed and speeds are set per the manufacturer, so I'm going to select that. And I am going to, the most important thing here is I need to make sure this box is checked. Project toolpath on the 3D model. Now, if you don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to start to V-carve from the top of the surface of the material. And since we already removed all that material, nothing's going to happen. So what we want to do is we want this these letters to follow the contour of the th top of the 3D model. By checking that, Vetric will automatically lay out the text in the V-carving toolpath right on top of the surface. So we're going to click Calculate. And we're going to go ahead and preview that. Yeah, that looks cool. So you see what happens now is it, it puts it right on the, uh, follows the contour of the actual model. All right. And one thing I like to do here is double check the depths. Now, if you look right here, there's an XYZ indicator, which shows you based on where your mouse is pointing, it's going to tell you how far down in Z in a negative number you are from the top. And it'll also tell you your relative X and Y position. I like to look at the Z number and I want to pick a spot like right here in the bottom of the K. And it, I want to make sure that I'm not going so close through the material that my end mill is going to punch out the backside or that I'm leaving a really, really thin layer of material. So in this case, I'm an inch and a half thick. I've got 1.23 inches that I'm down. So that leaves me with roughly a quarter of an inch underneath this uh, V carving, which is perfect. So that's just a little trick for you. I, I use that a lot just to make sure I don't accidentally uh, pop through the other side or leave myself with a very thin layer of material. You can flip the model over in Vetric and look and you can see, okay, it doesn't look like it's coming through at all. And that's fine, but the, the bigger issue for me is even though it's not popping through, I want to make sure I don't have like a 3,000 skin of material left on there because it will, in handling this project, probably break. So I want to make sure I have at least a 16th or an eighth of an inch. And in this case, I have almost a quarter, so I'm in good shape. Now, the very last thing I need to do this project is simply do the profile toolpath. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this uh, outside perimeter here. And we're going to go to Profile Toolpath. Now, I was originally going to do this with a quarter-inch end mill. So basically what I'm doing is I'm setting my start depth at zero, which is the top of the material. My cut depth at 1.5 inches, which is the, uh, the thickness of the material. What I'll actually do here is probably do 1.5.2, because I like to leave tw cut 20 thousandths deeper. In, and I have a spoil board underneath this. This just ensures I, if, if anything's uneven, I don't have uh, a piece of this uh, project that isn't cut all the way through. It saves me on doing any uh, secondary finishing type work. So I'm going to leave it 20 thousandths over and I'm going to just select a generic quarter inch end mill. I want to see what this looks like. We're going to machine outside the boundary because this boundary is the boundary of the finished product. So I want to make sure I'm cutting outside that line. And I don't need to add tabs. I don't need to do separate toolpath. Um, 
or separate last pass. The reason I don't need to add tabs is because I have, I'm holding this side phone down with two inch double side tape. So there'll be a couple strips of double side tape under this finished project here. So it's not gonna move. Uh, so I don't have to worry about having tabs to hold it in place. Uh, I am gonna program in, again, a one inch ramp. I do a one inch smooth ramp. And again, that's just out of habit. Probably not necessary in this job, but it's not a bad thing to get used to doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and click calculate. Now it's gonna warn me that my material thickness is 1.5 inches, but I've set my tool depth to 1.52. So it's basically saying it's gonna cut through the material and it wants to make sure I have a sacrificial layer underneath. That's a good warning. When this pops up, please pay attention to it because if you don't have a, a spoil board underneath, you could end up cutting into your machine table. So I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna preview this toolpath. And you can see that I've cut all the way through. And if I double click on this material on the outside, it gets rid of it. So now what I'm left with is the finished model. So because I use a quarter inch ML, I'm looking all the way around. It looks pretty good all the way through, but I got a couple spots that I don't think uh, that they're gonna fit properly. And mainly it's because of the uh, diameter of the end mill. Here's one spot right here where the quarter inch ML just can't get in tight enough. And another one is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and redo this, but I'm gonna choose an eighth inch end mill this time. And let's see, eighth inch, I do not have uh, anything set here for this because it's a new tool database. So I'm just gonna go generic on it. Um, again, I'm gonna go outside the vectors. Now this is automatically setting it for 25 passes. Uh, what I'll end up doing is put in some uh, settings based on the eighth inch ML that I'm using. Most likely it'll be done in seven or eight passes uh, since I'm only taking, uh, you know, an eighth inch to uh, three sixteenths or so per pass. Like everything else remains the same. I'm just going to click calculate. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this preview, but I'm not going to reset the preview. Okay, I'm going to leave the preview set the way it is. And I'm just going to run this uh, preview selected toolpath. And I want to just make sure now, see how it got in uh, tighter here, right up to the edge of the profile. And this corner looks nicer too. So the eighth inch end mill is the best end mill to use uh, to cut out the perimeter. Now, the issue is if I didn't do that half inch offset all the way around, I would need to have a, a, an end mill that's at least got a cutting height of an eight of an uh, inch and a half. Uh, and eighth inch end mills with that much of a cutting height are not super popular. So this allows me to use, uh, you know, a, an inch and a half overall end mill and I can still reach inside there. So that, that's one of the reasons why I put that offset. I, I just know what I have for tooling and I wanna make sure that I can get the desired output and still fit it within the constraints of the tools I have. So that is what the project is gonna look like. And again, this is being done in sign foam, which is gonna make it really easy for us to paint the letters and then we can paint the whole thing. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna finish it yet, but uh, I wanna just put this video tutorial together to show you how we got this far. So again, you can download that font and you can buy that file and this video basically walking you through exactly how to set it up on your machine. The only thing you're gonna have to worry about are setting your speeds and feeds according to the tools you're using and according to your machine's capabilities. Other than that, everything else is identical. Uh, this project's not very big. 12 by 18 should fit on most CNC machines out there, even the smaller desktop machines. So this is a project pretty much anybody can do if you have VCarve and uh, you know, wanna make a cool little Halloween uh, sign for your house. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, please like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel so you're notified every time we produ produce a new video and put it online.